I have uh, five o'clock. Give or take a few seconds. I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, hold on here. I've got the recording thing on here. And uh, we have the select board and Dorinda here. Welcome, everyone. Um, and do we have any amendments to the agenda? No, not for me. Okay. okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Uh, so the first the first item on the agenda is accepting Eric Young's official resignation as Lister and appointing Annette Halls. How do you pronounce her Laws. name? Laws. Halls. Yeah. Okay. To replace him until the March. 2023 town meeting action likely. Um, do you want to give us, maybe you could give us, Sarah, just a little uh, uh, review of what happened after our after our last meeting when you... Uh... Okay. Um, so uh, Annette and uh, Shelly uh, Desjardins have been uh, the most active, even though Annette knows that she cannot do any official list or duties. She's just been inputting data in the meantime, um, but they've, uh, Annette is a retired nurse and she lives on Upper Sunnybrook Road and she has been here almost every day doing work on uh, the grand list to the point where they've got all the, they're all cut up in the property transfer tax returns and they've taken um, online courses, free online courses through VLCT about, uh, you know, various aspects of listing and they've been working with Marla from Nemrick. So, um, I, Eric's resignation is official, was an official as of October, as of April 8th, and he was able to assign some official documents we needed for ta people's income taxes. So he served his duty and um, he is now gone. So we need the board to appoint a net uh, as an official lister so she can sign the grand list and do the official duties. And she's been excellent. So uh, just to be clear, Eric had agreed to do training. He now is not doing any training. He's gone and we're just working with uh, Nemrick. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, he, this, the listers met with him last week. The new listers met with him after the select board meeting and they have continued to talk to him. Um, I guess they'll call him and ask him for help. Uh, you know, that that's their business. I, um, I can't, I don't know what they've decided, what they've decided to do. He's, he goes back and forth on how available he is. It's it's right. somewhat complicated. Well, in any event, in any event, we need to appoint uh, we need Annette. To appoint Annette. And and why are we not appointing the second person? You've already appointed we two. Did that. Appointed, oh, we did. Appointed, oh, sorry. You yes. Gary you. Waring, you appointed Gary Waring and you appointed Shelley Desjardins at the last meeting, and now you need to appoint Annette. If that will because, that will because Eric is now gone. Got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Got it. So um, is there a motion to, um, we should probably do this, I guess, as two things. First of all, a motion to accept uh, Eric Young's official resignation as Lister. Would someone make that motion, please? I move that we accept Eric Young's uh, resignation from his position as Lister uh, with regret. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. We should also do whatever we do to, to uh, thank people. He's worked in that job, in that position for a long time. Yeah. So I don't know what we, I don't know what we usually do. Uh, yes, Steve. Second. Okay, you're seconding, okay. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting Eric Young's official resignation, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. aye. Any opposed? Okay. He has officially resigned and now we need a motion to appoint Annette to replace him until the March 2023 town meeting. Would someone make that motion, please? I'll move. Okay, Steve, a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Phil. Okay, all those in favor of uh, appointing Annette, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, there we go. Um, now we need to appoint Larry Rooney to fill a vacancy on the Zoning Board of Adjustment effective 
after April 20th, 2022. So, yeah. well, as you know, we've had a we've had a uh, vacancy on the ZBA since Sarah Berger stepped down to become the assistant zoning administrator. And I have had not had much luck finding anybody to step up. But uh, Larry, who has gone through a, he's gone through a zoning process recently um, to, to build a small cannabis farm or change a do a small home home industry at their house on Story Road. And he said during the, in the midst of the process, he told Kevin, you know, when this is over, I would like to be on the ZBA. And so he has, uh, they kind of had a technical screw up at their last hearing that it was hard getting people into Zoom. So they're just gonna have a quick hearing on the 20th, which I guess is tomorrow to make sure that everybody who wanted to be on Zoom can. And after that's done, then the board, then the ZBA will be done with uh, their proposal. And he wrote to say that it is his 60th birthday tonight, otherwise he would be here. Um, uh-huh. And he already has plans. He said, if you could pass on to the board that I'm very interested in the position. I found my experience applying for a zoning change educational. I feel I can help moving forward. I'm sure most of you know, but we bought our property in the fall of 2005 and have moved in permanently in the fall of 2006. We love metal six. The residents are awesome and friendly and have a great community spirit. As I approach retirement in the near future, I'd be happy to serve the town in this capacity. Thank you for considering me. Larry is a retired co- former cop from Massachusetts. Oh, Maybe we should have a constable again. <laughs> I, you don't know how many times I have pressed Larry to do that. I've showed him a shiny badge. I've done, no, he's not interested in being constable because he has to take the training and he doesn't want to take the training. Nobody does. Hmm. Plus, I think we've pretty conclusively proven that we don't really need a constable. So, no, not much choice. As nice as it was to have somebody lurking around in a uniform at elections. Right. So, um, to serve notices on junk warrants. Yeah. Is there a motion to appoint Larry Rooney to fill a vacancy on the Zoning Board of Adjustment effective April 20th? Uh, I'll move it. Okay, thanks, Liz. And a second, please. Second. Okay, thank you, Phil. All those in favor of appointing Larry Rooney to fill a vacancy on the ZBA effective April, it's actually after April 20th, right? So it's right, April, after, after April, April 20th. Effective April 21st. Mm-hmm. Okay. Please say aye. 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 Mm-hmm. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Is Todd yeah. here? I don't see him. He oh, just yes, I do see him. There he is. Oh, hey. Hi, Todd. Welcome. Hi. Um, I'm a little so, early. Is that? <clears throat> I'm a little early. Is that all right? Yeah, and we're a little ahead on our agenda, so it's actually perfect. Okay. <laughs> Your timing is perfect. So, nice. um, you want to talk to us about perhaps renting or buying the old fire station behind the town hall for use as a wood shop with a retail yes. component? Yes. So with that, yeah. you're, you're on. Welcome. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a woodworker. Uh, I build cabinetry um, primarily. I do uh, furniture components as well, um, but I bet 80% of what I do is cabinetry, such as kitchens and bathrooms and that sort of thing. Um, I'm currently located in Northfield. Um, and looking for a bigger space. And I've been looking at the old firehouse for a few years now um, and thought, gee, hey, this this could work. Um, so I, I would move my whole business into the firehouse and create um, a, a retail space on the second floor, um, which I currently don't have. Uh, so it would be actually pretty good for me to have that kind of space upstairs. Um, and yeah, I think the purpose of this meeting is to, to get a sense from the town, if you guys are interested in that or not and go from there. Yeah. Um, so you've been, you've been through the building, you know, you know what it is. I, I, I've been through it. Uh, I've been through it, uh, I want want to say two or three years ago, and then actually last month I went through it again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
So uh, the two things that I'm aware of that could be problematic is there is no heating system in there right now, which you probably know. Um, yeah. But the other issue is, and I'm not certain about this, but I believe the fire escape, which was the secondary egress from the second floor, is kaput or severely uh, severely impaired. I'm not sure okay. about that, but before you uh, before you occupied the second floor, uh, you'd have to make arrangements for a secondary egress. I'm sure. Um, so, could you rehab the current egress? Or are you saying I don't? I don't. I don't know. I, I you know, uh, I haven't looked. At, I walk by that <laughs> building and a shiver goes down my spine. So I don't spend a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> studying. Yeah. There used to be there used to be a metal fire escape, but I can't remember if it. Does anybody know if it's if it's still there? And if it is still there, is it serviceable? No idea. Because I think it was it was sort of falling off the side of the building. A few years right. ago, yeah. So I don't know about I don't know about that. And I guess the other the other question for me is uh, just the issue of you know. And I know they're all over Vermont, but woodworking shop in a wood frame building is often uh, not a great uh, not a great thing. And I don't know what <laughs> you know. I don't know what you have or would have for dust collecting systems and sawdust collecting, you know, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. That make it, well, uh, right. I, I think my vision for the dust collection is actually building a closet, if you want to call it that, to house the dust collection system on the exterior part of the building somewhere. And this would <clears throat> allow for easier transfer of the waste out of the shop into, let's say, a dumpster of some kind but I could also soundproof it. So the dust collection would. I'm sorry. sorry. I was just going to say yeah. it also needs to be if it's if it's of uh, of wood frame construction needs to be yeah. fireproof with a double layer of shoe. I mean, I'm not sure what the what the latest rules are, but there is yeah. there is the opportunity for spontaneous combustion, as you know, especially if it gets wet somehow. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think in the past our position was that we were, we were willing to entertain or think about any, any reasonable proposal. But it's been a while since we've talked to anybody about this, so I don't know how other, uh, other board members feel. We certainly have not uh, followed through on our commitment to tear the building down. So. Right. It's still there. Right. Yes, Dave. Okay. The one thing that I I would say, first thing that came to mind is that, um, first of all, I'd like to see something done with the building. However, I, I think we should, from my perspective, I think we should figure out what we're doing with the town hall before we move forward with anything there. Uh-huh. What, um, sorry, I'm, I'm not very um, clued into the town hall's uh, news or, or uh, what am I trying to say? What, I guess, what are you trying to figure out with the town hall? So we're in the, we're in the mode of trying to figure out, there, there's some problems with the existing town hall that need to be resolved. Yeah. And um, the question is, are we better off to renovate our existing town hall, sell our existing town hall and build a new one somewhere else or move into another building somewhere else. And we're right in the, right in the early phases of doing that. Um, uh -huh. That said, I don't know. I, I, I hear what you're, I hear what you're saying, Steve. I mean, we could, we could, I suppose, consider entering into some kind of short term, short term lease, but you know, that probably isn't the best thing for you, Todd. I certainly wouldn't expect you to go in there and do renovations if you only had No, it. I mean, if it if it were, uh, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, if I were to do this move, I would eventually like to own the building. So, 
you know, that's not impossible, I don't think. But uh -huh. the, the challenge is we now have a shared septic system and a shared water system. Uh -huh. So we'd have to figure that out. And the other, the other concern there, which is a concern, uh, you know, all the time is just how the parking, you know, retail operation, if there were, if there were uh, people there on the weekends, parking wouldn't be a problem. But during the week, parking definitely could potentially be a problem. Right. I mean, I don't there know doesn't have to be retail. To I, there doesn't have to be retail. I just thought that might be something you guys would be interested in myself bringing a business to the town and have a retail component. Well, so, me, but, but I don't have to, I mean, I don't currently do retail at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't need to, but have, if it, have, as, as a, or is it just, excuse me, do you have employees or is it just you? Yeah, I have two. So there would likely yep. be three vehicles potentially. Yeah. There'd be a trailer. I mean, I have a, a utility trailer and there needs to be some sort of dumpster of some kind. Uh, yeah. Not yep. huge, not like a roll off one, just a small, you know, yep. six, six yards. I think they hold something like that. Yeah. Nothing big. Um, and that would be it in the parking lot. I mean, all the time. And then if there are retail hours, um, I guess we'd have to come to agreement about where they could park and where they couldn't park. Right. I was just going to add my two cents in also just agreeing with Steve. That was sort of the first thing that I thought was we're just, I, I think it's looking kind of hopeful that we're going to get this grant um, to, uh, to be able to assess, to do a full assessment of the town hall, yeah. um, as well as, you know, looking at other options besides, you know, sort of refurbishing the town hall to the, the 2022 standards. Um, and so if we get that grant, all that's going to do is in the next year, give us information about our town hall, right? And allow us to make a better decision about what we're gonna do. So in terms of like time frame, it's it's sort of a funny time for this to come up because, you know, what if we decide, oh, it really makes sense to refurbish the town hall, but then there's suddenly this business next door that's using up parking spaces and now we have that problem. Right. Um, whereas right. potentially maybe even one of the things would be, oh, you tear that building down and you turn it into parking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't right. know what the value of that parking is, but I would be, I mean, of that building is, but, but I just, <laughs> um, but at the same time, I think it's exciting to have the possibility of having a business, um, in town and bringing in more, more folks and having a retail component to it. So, you know, right. I just, you know, I would, it's, it's one of these buildings that isn't like the easiest building. It's not like everybody's pounding down our doors to buy this building. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, or right. It, yeah, it's going to need it. some love. It's going to need some love for sure. But I guess what I was trying to get at is back to the parking issue. If that's a concern, I don't need to do retail at all. It, it was more out of, okay, I think the town might be interested in having another business. Therefore I would do retail. If that got me into the building. Well, I, you know, who knows if we, I mean, I don't, I'm just, just trying to think about this while we're talking about it, but you know, if you had retail hours, which were, uh, not overlapping with the hours when we're open or holding meetings there, which is, 99% during the week only. Uh, who knows? Maybe there's some, maybe there's some middle right. ground. I guess, I guess though, uh, unfortunately, I mean, if, if you had come to us two months ago, we would probably be, uh, be salivating to do this, but now, now that we're right, right. in the of trying to make a decision about what we're going to do with that building. And if we're even going to continue to own that building, um, right. I'm afraid probably, it doesn't make uh, it doesn't make sense to go forward with this now. But I would say, you know, keep in touch with us. Is that sure? 
Is everyone yeah. that? Does, that make, does that make sense to everyone? What is what? What time frame do you have in mind in terms of getting back to you? Six months, a year? How much time do you need? I would think, Liz. I would think whether or not this grant. I'm I'm presuming, and I could be wrong, but I'm presuming if this grant does not come through, that we're going to do some kind of an assessment with the resources we have and make some. I mean, we. We need to make decisions about this building. So as much yeah. as the grant is an attractive option, if that doesn't work, we're going to have to figure out how to do it on our own with our own with our own funds. Or maybe there's another grant opportunity. I don't know. But right. I would think, Liz, do you disagree that in a year we should know what direction we're going in? I think six months is too short, but a year, I think. Is- yeah, I think six months is too short because it's, you know, even if we get the grant, if we get the grant, we'll know in June, which is fairly soon. And then we would, you know, have a certain time frame. And I would imagine it would start, you know, in the summer to start actually doing the assessment. But again, this is nothing about like making any changes to the building. It's only about reviewing the building and other options for a town hall. Um, And so, you know, even if (laughs) we decided to like do something, it wouldn't be until probably at the earliest town meeting, we might vote on something as a town. If we're voting on something like, you know, I mean, it, it's it. It would be a couple of years before anything actually happened to the town hall. Is really what it boils down to. Okay. Yeah, we would. I would right. think we would know. We would know in a year if we're renovating the town hall yes. or moving into the state police barracks or building a new town yes. hall somewhere. We would know in a year. Okay. I think you're right. That would make sense. So I'm I'm sorry about this, Todd. It's very nice to very nice to meet yeah, you. But nice keep, to meet you keep too. Keep in touch with us and keep your eye. I will. I'm sure whatever whatever action is that occurs about the town hall, it'll be on the town website and publicly available. Yeah. And you can you can reach out to yeah, us well, uh, I'll, anytime I'll to see what's I, going on. Like I said, if I if I don't see any big changes there, I'll I'll be sure to contact you again if I don't find something else. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. So we have a few minutes until the fire department comes. Does that give us time to review and approve the 2022 local emergency management plan? You think? Uh, There haven't been that many changes. I mean, we updated, I updated it with, um, First of all, I think Margaret, our emergency management coordinator, is extremely she's she's been taking continuing education courses. So I think she's been upping her licensing. So I don't think you have to sign at this time, Peter. I think that uh, well, maybe you do. Um, But the the only thing I changed was the, you know, removing um, Doug Hansen as fire chief and putting in Eric Mativier. Other than that, the spaces are all the same. The number most of the numbers are the same. Nothing nothing has really changed. Okay, and we need, I mean, it says review and approve. Yep, I sent it to you guys. Oh, you did? Yeah, I sent it last week. Do you want to hold off until the next meeting? I'm sorry, no, 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 no. <laughs> I am very happy unless unless somebody else wants to postpone this, knowing that, knowing that those are the only changes, I'm very happy to go ahead and approve it if everyone else agrees. Does that make sense or do you want to wait? I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Um, is someone uh, willing to make a motion that we approve the updated emergency management plan? So moved. Thank you, Phil. Second. 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 I'm sorry. Who was the second? Steve. Steve. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay. All those in favor of approval of the 2022 local emergency management plan, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. All right, Peter, I'm going to need you to sign that as a rep- representative from the select board, unless you want to appoint somebody else to sign on your behalf. No, I'm happy. I purposefully did not come down and uh, 
and sign the orders today in anticipation of having something else to sign. So I'll be down tomorrow. Great. Okay, I see uh, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi. I guess we are we are ready for you a few minutes early. If you're uh, if you're ready. Yep, I'm I'm ready. Eric's uh, missing this lovely snow down in Florida. What? So, um, as far as um, calls, I'll uh, listen to the board board meeting. Oh yeah. Yep. Is there power yet? They're saying like three to four, three days. So they're just cool. <laughs> Good job. Um, so um, I don't have it printed out because I haven't had power all day. Um, as far as calls, we have had uh, four calls, fire calls this month. Um, average has been a little over three per call. Uh, we've had 11 fast squad uh, calls. Um, we haven't had anything unusual to um, to purchase or repair in the last month. The uh, next month, uh, all our vehicles will be scheduled in for um, annual inspection and servicing. Um, we did have our drawing um, for a raffle on Friday evening, and um, we're st I'm still working on the final numbers for what we got from that. Um, we are looking at the using some of the money to go towards the gas meter um, that the American Legion has, had given us $100 towards, and we're also gonna be checking out the prices of a couple of um, propane meters. Um, so we have, a couple of meters that are dedicated solely to propane. Um, and we had, uh, we did some- Excuse me, Jeff, those are leak detectors? Uh, yeah, so if somebody, uh, you know, if they smell propane, yep. we use those. We can use a multi-gas meter, but there's some uh, math involved with that. Uh, so with the dedicated propane ones, uh, it's a lot easier and, uh, firefighter proof. Um, as far as training, we did uh, self-contained uh, breathing apparatus training at the um, the, the Moortown house uh, with their permission, and um, that went quite well. People got uh, used to using the air packs again. Sorry we didn't invite you, Liz. Uh, I'm sure you would have enjoyed it again. <laughs> um, and we have our meeting tonight. Um, that's pretty much all from us other than, uh, when we had presented the budget, we talked about, uh, turnout gear. We had put that in our budget and then you guys had taken it out and I didn't see anything in town report on it. So I wondered what the status of, uh, replacing turnout gear was. Our funding for that. Help me, help me out if I'm, if I'm mistaken, but I think there was hope that we were going to be able to get some kind of a grant. The only thing that the city of leagues and towns has is a one-time $1,000 grant, which doesn't even cover one set. Right. Right. I'm There's sorry. Is the there. turnout gear again? Is that the, um, what, what is that co again? The coats, coats and pants. Oh, the coats. Okay. Uh, boots are good and helmets good. Gloves are, are more a, uh, we treat that as a consumable item. When somebody needs new gloves, they get new gloves. Yes, um, if my memory serves me correct, I believe it was taken out and there was discussion about uh, potentially borrowing money to, to outfit that stuff over time and not just purchase all at once. I don't know if the, anybody else remembers that conversation or I not. Don't. The, the, the discussion was to take it out the problem with buying over time is all of the, the gear is over 10 years old. So it's already after over its NFPA due date. So remind me what the expected cost was going to be. So uh, we're looking at about $1,300 per set and 10 sets. So 
13,000. Was that put in our, um, in the capital uh, budget? Did, did, does anyone remember? I, I, I was just it. trying to look. So Liz, am I, am I not wrong that, that you had a lead on a, on a grant for firefighting equipment or is that am I? There, the, uh, Eric applied for one for the um, breathing apparatus and didn't get it. Yeah. That was a while ago, right, Jeff? Yeah. That was like last year or something. I think yeah. it's every year, but, you know, I it's millions of dollars, but, you know, around the country. Um, but I, you know, I don't know what their criteria is. I didn't see the grant. Um it's so they have a, they have a, they put this list out and say, oh, you can put towards all these things. However, they have a, a, and they don't say this, but they have a pecking order of what they're going to go for. And mm. pumpers are usually their number one item. And then once the pumpers are done, if there's anything left, then I they see. start rolling that kind of stuff out. Um, it's like we had tried for, and this was years ago, we had tried for a tanker um and and that was like well don't even bother i mean we put the package in we did get the um driver training software and pv and computer um with that grant but for vehicle wise unless it's a frontline pumper you're not getting it so my memory is that you told us that 10 years was the was the safe limit on that turnout here that's what NFPA recommend. That, that's their recommendation. So, do do we absolutely have to follow that? No, we don't. If you if we're um, Montpelier, then different story. But because we're a volunteer department, um, that's the NFPA is a recommend recommending body. Even though they have these. Um, uh, I don't want to say regulations, but they have guidance on all kinds of stuff. And yeah. one of those happens to be age and caring of, of turnout gear. Yeah. And just like for trucks, their recommendation is 25 years to replace trucks. Right. Do we replace them at 25 years? Not if they're in, in good shape and we're not spending lots on servicing. Yeah. Well, uh, I think, I mean, for me, and I'm interested in hearing for other people. I think we need to add, we need to we need to figure this out. And I appreciate you uh, bringing it up. I mean, as I've said many times over the years, I mean, the number one priority for me with the fire department is for our firefighters to be safe. So whether it's the breathing apparatus or the turnout gear or whatever, uh, I want to be sure you guys are safe. Um, exactly what we can do and how we would do it. Uh, we need to figure it out, I guess. Is your hand up, Lorinda? Yeah. Um, I think this would fall under um, government services with ARPA. That's what I was so going to say. That's what, was, that's what I was about to ask, if, if potentially we could use some of our ARPA funds to do this, because if we could, that would be... Uh, that would be Absolutely. That would be a slam dunk, yeah. So let us... We're, <laughs> we were supposed to dedicate tonight's meeting, Jeff, to only talking about how we were going to use the ARPA fund. So this is a great lead into that, but um, we'll work on that. What's the, what's the lead time in terms of getting that stuff if you order it? Um, I, I don't have that information. We, we, we haven't gone that deep because we're waiting to see okay. what the, so we can I start see, working sir. that. We can start yeah. working the process. Okay. And then, Okay, well, why don't you, why don't, I mean, let us, let us think about this and work on it a little bit. And at the same time, why don't you look into what the, uh, what the, what the process would, uh, would be with all the supply chain stuff might take a year to get the damn things, heaven forbid. Yeah, well, one of the places we're looking at is Globe, which is manufactured in uh, New Hampshire. So yeah. <clears throat> hopefully they can get the textiles, which I think they use American made stuff. So, uh, but yeah, okay. there could be. Well, all, all I'm, all I'm saying is let's, let's, let's get going on it. And I okay. appreciate you, uh, uh, bringing it up. Yes, Sarah. I'm just saying that Scott Isham has had his, his hand up. I don't know if you can see that icon. Oh, I 
can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see him. Uh, yes, hey, Peter. Um, Sorry. Yeah, we were, we were talking. Uh, you were talking about uh, you'd have to put it up to a town vote if you couldn't pay it back in a year. And what you had recommended is buying the turnout gear, all of it, but paying it off within, I think, a term of like four years, if I remember right at one of the meetings you were, you were talking about that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I mean, the good news is, the good news is if we're able to use the ARPA funds, they're sitting there in the bank ready to go. So um, that kind of obviates the need to do that, I think. Okay. But thank you for reminding us. Uh, hey, um, Jeff? Uh, before we get off this topic, um, if that stuff has a 10 year lifespan, no matter what happens, um, uh, we should probably be in touch to start the process of, of informing the budget committee to add this to the capital improvement plan for 10 years out. Even if we figure out buying something today, let's make sure we get it on the list for this, this new process that we're doing. Um, I think we put that on the list, didn't we, Liz? Uh, do you have it in front of you, um, uh, Randy? Because I, I didn't I, open it up to I see. If you told it. him, he probably has it on there. I, I don't have it right in front of me. So okay. I will check, Jeff. And um, I, the budget committee has been talking about um, making sure we reach out through email to all of the departments across the town to talk about this. Um, so you'll probably see something come through to the fire department and that'll start that process. But by all means, please reach out to the budget committee if you have any questions once we, once we get this moving. Okay, yeah, because there should be the air packs and a water filtration system on that list as well. Because I remember specifically those two things for sure were, were added on that list when we had yeah, that. First I remember, I, I believe they were on there, but... I don't have it in front of me either. I apologize. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, let's see. Um, this is the fire department, right? Yep. So we have uh, protective gear. This says $2,500 a set and uh, five to 10 years useful life. Um, and then it says estimated replacement cost 16,000. So that actually goes closer to what you said, 16 times 10, right? Well, I, I had said 13 times 10, but yeah. I mean, okay, it, so it's not, it's not um, 2,500 a set. It's that price probably included helmet and boots. So that's where the extra, we're just looking for coats and pants because the helmets and boots um, are, are fine. Uh, and they get, the boots especially get replaced occasionally as. Okay. So is that water. under protective gear? That's right. That would be protective gear. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to turn that to 1300 a set. And you said times um, 10. 10. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that and actually shows as as a 2021, like to replace it in 2021. Right. So I'll, I'll work on um, getting pricing um, and see what see if we're close to that or if inflation has taken us past okay. what, what we had had. So what do we do? What do we do with our uh, old stuff? Do we keep that as spares or for new people or? Um, initially it would be good to keep it as spares because we go to a scene, we're going to have to get uh, gear cleaned or either cleaned or if the gear is sopping wet, um, which tends to happen in the wintertime, um, then it needs time to dry out. So it's, it's actually, yeah. if the members can have a set just in case we need it before the primary set is either dry or clean. I've been to enough fires where I come back sopping wet or looking right. like an example. Right. So we'll, we'll move on that. Uh, Jeff, as I said, that's we're, we're going to talk about that very, not, not just yours, but the use of the ARPA money in general tonight and start a okay. serious discussion. So um, we'll get back to you on that. The other thing, the other thing I want to do is um, make sure that we talk about and have a plan for 
for moving forward with our potential, uh, I'm calling it a merger of our, uh, of our two organizations. And I guess what my suggestion would be is that we will, we will put together a, a proposal for how that should, how that should work, what, it, what exactly is required. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty simple, but to figure out what it is. And at the same time, if you guys would come up with a list of any concerns or issues that you have potentially uh, going forward with how this could work so we can start walking down the path of, of uh, figuring this out. Okay. Because time flies, time flies by as you will. As oh, you yeah. will. Um, I just wanted to say something before I forget Randy that I, in that workshop that I took about capital planning, they're suggesting that you put in a 4% increase every year. <laughs> so just when we're thinking about 10 years down the road, $13,000 in 10 years is going to not be 13,000. So the yeah. formula, I don't know what that is, but um, I'd have to. Those old, those, those trusty old compound interest tables again. Right. Exactly. Where's my, <laughs> where's my slide roll when I need it? <laughs> I know there's an Excel formula for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's a point well taken. I'm, I was actually thinking about that in one of the meetings. I was thinking, you know, if a truck costs this amount of money today, it sure as hell is going to cost more in seven years. So, yes. Yeah. And I don't know whether I don't I don't necessarily think we just use the same plug number for everything. I think depending on what it is, we try and do the best projection that we can, even knowing that it's a obviously a projection um anything else for uh for jeff this evening anyone okay jeff thank you very much okie doke and we just hopefully got power your, back on. hopefully your lights come back on mine are on they just came back on there you go the the generator down at the station was working today so we had power down there Look, perfect so perfect. all righty Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Sure. Bye. Uh, highway Department, ratifying a Highway Department application for a paving grant from VTRANS and authorizing Roads Commissioner Baines. Authorizing Roads Commissioner Baines. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I just mute, mute, muted him. There you go. Oh, okay. Um, ratifying a highway department application for a paving grant from VTRANS and authorizing road commissioner Vic Dwyer as signatory action likely. Uh, Victor, you're up. Yes, sir. They, uh, yeah, we got, we, uh, we got we got the application in last Friday. Really, all we had to do was put it uh, put the uh, application in, and uh, any signing can be later. If you want me to sign it, I'll sign it. And is, is the amount as urgent? Not as urgent as once thought. Okay, and the amount is the, the same as what we were approved for last year. Well, this is this one. I don't the the uh, we're just applying for a grant. We don't have to have uh, all the information in right now. I don't. We haven't we haven't had. Uh, this is for Shady Rill. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the paving grant that we had already no approved for. This is a new one. No one from from uh, in in Shady Rill. Okay. Actually, the, the uh, estimator um, came over in uh, EJ Blondin, and uh, I think only uh, the increase in price was only seven dollars a ton. So it's, that may sound like a lot to you, but that was very oh, sure. encouraging. Yep. And and what exact is it the whole the whole paved section of Shady Rail or the lower section or the upper section or what are we talking about? The upper section. Okay. From the town garage up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Yes, Sarah. I just need some clarification. So this is a paving grant from VTrans for to finish off where the road crew left off, which would be from the highway department to uh, where the dirt happens at Molly Supple. Is that right? And how much is it for, uh, Vic? That has a, that's to be determined. To be determined. Okay. And when would you get the grant? Do you know? Um, it would... Sometime this year, we would be told whether we were eligible or not. How many, we can be told that, uh, I mean, the possibility is we won't get it because we just got one. Right. I, know. That's, that was I just want to get into the minutes that it's a, a grant for a certain amount and when you would be able to use it, but that's okay. It's from the, from the, from that, that part that you guys didn't get to do when you repaved the other part of Shady Roll Road. Okay. Thank you. Potential is a key word. Potential. <laughs> okay. And and Rick, you guys are, are working on the plan for the paving grant that's already been approved for Center Road, right? Um, we haven't yeah. We haven't got time yet. We haven't found time. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh do you have anything else for us while you're on the hot seat? Um, um. I see Steve looking at it. Uh, Steve and uh, Shane and I were going to meet with him. It's what I thought, but we haven't we haven't scheduled that yet. We just haven't done it. Just okay. haven't done it. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Just, Vic, at looking at the... Um, uh, the warrants and the... the... the, um, the invoices, the... like, how far off are we in terms of the money we were spending on this road repair, like how much extra do you anticipate that we will have spent this season on mud on just, just this getting us $5,000. <gasps> wow. Okay. Thanks, Vic. That was the answer you didn't want to hear, right? <laughs> I just, I saw how expensive it was. I just wasn't sure how much we normally spend at this time of year. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know the answer to that question. But we, uh, whatever's in our budget, it's we're, we're above whatever we norm by 75,000 or that's how much we spent this year. Steve, do you have a sense from past years? I don't. I don't think we're going to be seventy five thousand above what we normally spend. But okay. it's oh. it's way above what we normally have. We don't. This hasn't happened in a long, long, long time. I would say, and I this is just from my memory, but I I would say typically it's twenty five thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars this time of year, and. Sometimes we have stone and, and gravel and material left over, and sometimes we use it all up. But um, I think that's more a typical mud season expenditure. That's ignoring that's ignoring any you know special extra mud season mitigation work. Just dealing with a regular uh, regular right. springtime food. Right. Does that sound about yeah. right, Steve? Yeah. 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 So yeah. we're a bit of a we're in a bit of a hole here, and the know, there's, another, there's another question when we get to the ARPA discussion. Can we possibly use some of those funds for that as well? Maybe we can't. I don't know. We'll get there's to still that. hope. There's still hope that uh, the state's going to give uh, that uh, we're going to get reimbursed some of this because of the severe uh, uh, spring frost uh, or uh, mud season. Yep. We're still trying to uh, try to do that. Um, the other is thing there, is we we got. Um, is there any time frame on that decision, Victor? Did that you know of? Not that I know of. No. No. Um, the other thing is we got. Uh, uh, I think the best way to say it, I. Uh, uh, it, we met with uh, we Shane and I met with uh, with uh, Jim Ryan from the uh, ANR 
um, the um, uh, municipal road grant program. He's the one that uh, uh, oversees uh, the uh, like the stone fill and uh, sediment basins and uh, seed and weeding, all that stuff uh, to stop e uh, erosion going into the uh, joining brooks. And somebody turned us in for Baldock Road. And uh, we met, uh, it was a week ago, Monday, last Monday, I think it was the 11th. Okay. We walked the entire road and uh, um, he, he showed us what he wanted, his wish list. And uh, uh, he wanted us to, uh, to uh, hydro seed everything and then go back and uh, um, make the adjustments, uh, put in stone fill, uh, put in matting where we where we, it would possibly help, lay the slopes back, uh, which most which which the ones he wanted would be out of sight of our right of way. Probably not a problem uh, with uh, because most of that was on Bulldog property. And it was thought that uh, they wouldn't mind us doing that. But um, anyways, uh, he did not, he said that uh, he didn't know whether they were gonna find us or not. And uh, uh, we thought that, uh, that uh, we could, we were all set or Shane thought he was all set because of uh, the connected sections were the ones that he did, but in uh, reality, uh, if it's not a connect connected section, uh, is it comes under that uh, uh, standard for highway and bridge uh, projects uh, specifications, and that that that's the uh, document that we signed in uh, at uh, right after town meeting that we will do. So if one doesn't pick it up, the other does. Um, but due to the uh, weather conditions we've had in the last week, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, hydro seed it. We're all set to do it, but uh, the reason uh, given that we didn't do it last fall was because uh, uh, the truck that we use ended up down at Bootsy's and uh, we couldn't get parts for it. And I think if you remember, or maybe you don't remember, we didn't get it back until like December. And by that time it was too late to hydro seed. So anyways, uh, we're gonna do that just as soon as uh, the snow melts, I guess. Well, probably if we're negotiating a fine by dealing with their concerns and problems and getting them taken care of might make them more sympathetic towards not fining us. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't come out and say that, that that was going to happen, but, uh, you know, he, well, he did mention it. He wasn't sure whether it would happen. Or not. Yeah, let's hope it's not an issue. Right. Anything else for uh, Victor, anyone? Okay, thank you, Vic. Yep. Uh, so we have... Um, We need to go into executive session for two uh, two matters, which are uh, listed on our listed on our agenda. Is there a motion to go into executive session? I'll make the motion to go under into executive session. Um, I guess I need to state that it's the VSA three thirteen to discuss grievances. Yes, thank you. And uh, is there a second, please? Okay, thank you, Phil. Wait, wait. In that motion, in that motion, Randy should specify who should attend who is not on the select board. Um, I would like Victor to attend if everybody's in agreement with that. Okay. And what about what about Sarah and Dorinda? I don't need to, I don't need to attend. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. This is a matter that pertains directly to the highway department. And at this point, I feel like uh, we can start with Victor and and move on from there. If okay, before to. before anyone talks, I just need to have somebody be able to call me to just say when you're going back in the meeting or else I can actually just uh, 
I don't know if I can mute everything. I'll text I can, you. I can call you, Sarah. Okay, Liz will text me. So I can just haul her up. Oh, okay. that's true. <laughs> All right, that's true. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to just give me a tip. I need to put people in the uh, put in the waiting room. I guess we're ready back to go. So you got out of the executive session at 6:46. Okay, 6:45. And we are taking and we are taking no action uh, at this time as a result of the executive session. We did probably <laughs> trying to be careful and trying to be proper, uh, get into a discussion about advertising, uh, advertising for the road crew. And we agreed we'd talk about it out of executive session. We want to ramp up our activity, whatever that means. We discuss or we have thoughts of trying to figure out how to use social media. Um, the point is we really need to find a qualified person for the road crew. So I think front porch, I think we do all the stuff we've been doing. And if we can do, if we can do something more or somebody has an idea of how to do something more, let's do it. Because this is the time of year when a lot of people who typically take the winter off to do whatever they do in the winter, I always used to call it going into the woods, but uh, they're ready to go back to work and now's the time and contractors are out looking for them. Other towns are out looking for them. Um, we've got to, we got to get out there and get out there and hunt. Yes, sir. Sarah. I know that they have a, uh, a, a big equipment show, heavy equipment show coming up. Probably that's a great time to start looking around or maybe passing out something to, uh, because you'll have other people from other road crews from all over the place. Where's that? How to drive heavy equipment. That sounds like a networking event for Shane and the guys because didn't there, they just sign up for that? Yep. They did, yes. So, we, uh, so, so, um, uh, you know, sign on bonuses are maybe a possibility. I mean, the other thing, the other thing that I'd be willing to consider, which I've done a few times over the years, is, uh, is not a not a huge, but a but a reasonable bonus for uh, for an employee who brings us a qualified candidate who we hire. Not just bring us a qualified candidate, but somebody who we hire. And we I don't know do that at Capstone. Right amount, or you do that same thing, Randy. Yeah, we offer a thousand dollars for uh, an employee referral. They get half of it at the six month mark and half of it at the year mark. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you, the, you know, as, as we all know, these guys all know each other to one degree or another. And uh, I don't know. I would, bet, I would bet that 25 to 30 percent of the existing crew technicians in our department have been hired in that manner over the last three years. Wow. wow. Huh. And, and we've had an ongoing ad for um all of that three years if not four um that has never been taken down and we're still short staffed so you know to have that referral program bring in that many people that are still on staff today was huge so i don't think that that's a bad idea no i think it's a hell of a good idea i don't know how many who would who would take it take it seriously but uh that's enough money to motivate someone that's for sure i would think we said the same thing a thousand dollars for somebody we hire five hundred dollars when they're hired and five hundred dollars if they're still working for us in six months what do you think yeah yeah i would support that i mean we need to do something to be creative to, to yeah. stir the to stir the pot, Victor will, Victor will be out there knocking on doors for that thousand dollars, right, Victor? <laughs> I can see him whizzing around in his electric car now. Well, I'm putting pictures on on telephone poles. <laughs> Why? <Water. laughs> <On it. laughs> no, seriously speaking. I don't know. I don't, I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be facetious. I think we seriously need to think outside the box on this because what we're doing clearly is not working seriously speaking peter i think that might happen within a week's time for you 
Nothing that I'm going to do, but I bet that that will. The okay. part, well, somebody okay. taking you taking a town up on that offer. Okay, so we should make sure, and Dorinda would want us to make sure that that was in the minute. So, is somebody willing to uh, make a motion that we do that? I would make a motion that we offer a sign-on bonus for an employee referral. Um, offering half of it at uh, the six month mark and half of it at the year? Or uh, did you say sign on uh, for when they get hired and half at the six month mark? I don't know, whatever the right, whatever the right way to do it is, but I don't want to pay for somebody who, I, right. I think that makes sense. You got to put some money in their pocket and say, thank you very much. And hopefully this works and there's another $500 coming. I like the sound of that if everybody- hey, hey. I just need yeah. you guys to slow down. There's either a sign-on bonus for someone to come in, or are you talking about a referral? A bonus, a a referral, referral it's a referral bonus, not a sign-on bonus. That's the first step. And how much is that for? $1,000 total. So I offer a, a $1,000 referral payment or bonus. Referral fee. bonus. Fee. Fee. Yeah. Fee. Yes. Referral, referral fee. Fee. Referral, referral fee. fee. Okay, and I'm just trying to sort, trying to be a mind reader, and it would be payable when? 50 percent when the person is hired, and 50 percent in six months. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. That person stays on, or no matter what, how you? No, no, no they have to be still working for us. For yeah. still, yeah. So the person is still working for us. Yeah, and great. this referral yeah, yeah. fee would only only qualified only current employees could get that, right? Not somebody off the street or someone off the street. No, get no, it. no. This is for our employees. Yeah. Okay. All employees like me. Yeah. Sure. Why not? I mean, I think that's that's right. I don't think select board members should get it. I would oh, say any on. town and any town employee. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay, so we need to make that motion and vote on it. Okay, I will make the motion for the one thousand dollar employee referral fee with a payment of fifty percent at the time of hiring a qualified candidate, and fifty percent as long as that candidate is still employed at the six month mark. I'll second, Randy. That was either Steve or Phil. I don't know who yeah, raised that one. Take your pick. <laughs> Take your pick. Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Liz, are you still there? Yeah, sorry. My generator shut down. So now I'm just on the phone. What were we voting on? <laughs> <laughs> Referral. <laughs> The referral. Oh, yes, I'm in favor of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Review of Steve Martin's email to the board, our re-annual highway department boot compensation procedure, action possible. Steve, you're on. Well, I... I sent that out um, after that last meeting. Um, I didn't get it right out uh, when I wanted to, but I finally got it out. Um, anyway, uh, one comment that I wanted to make was that uh, I applaud Dorinda for keeping her eye on these things. I think that first I wanted to say that I think that's extremely important and she's always done that. And, and I, I, I've always had faith that, you know, she picks up on, on any of these things. So that being said, we, we still had the problem and then we end up discussing it. And with all of the things that we have to do, I think that we need to change how we do this so that that is not a discussion in the future. And that's why I put it. And I believe everybody's had a chance to read it. I don't think we need to spend a half an hour on it. That's my opinion. And that's all I need to say. Yes, Victor. I just I just de disagree with one part of it respectfully uh, is that the wording should be up to two hundred dollars. You don't just give them two hundred dollars. 
In other words, we still want to end up just paying for a pair of boots. Okay, so I, I went back and looked at what our current revised, updated thing says, and nowhere in there does it say it's one pair of boots. No. No, but it should be. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm just bringing it up because people keep saying it's one pair of boots, but it says the town of Middlesex offers a boot only allowance that was to deal with the sock issue up to two hundred dollars to a full time highway department employees on their date of hire and annually thereafter. These boots must meet ASTM, blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't say it's one pair of boots. Yeah. I think the key word there is boot, not boots. Yeah. Well, we're so, not going to buy only one boot. I'm, no. I'm, I am so. so old. I mean, anybody with common sense is going to get is going to know you're not going to get two pairs of boots. Well, then it ought to say one pair of boots. That's, that's yeah, that's why I'm saying say one pair of boots up to two hundred dollars. Unless you want to get, I'm, I'm you know, unless you want to throw some money away. All, right, all I'm saying is the chain read the policy. And obviously misunderstood it. He wasn't deliberately trying to take advantage of us. I, I am not saying that he is. No, 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 no. Nor did I. No, I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying he did. But, uh, you know, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I do think it's a stretch to think you can get two pairs of boots. I mean, it. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be in my mind. I mean, of course, I've been. Uh, you know, I've been in that where we got boots. We got boots every two years. One pair. So. The other thing, I, I don't know, the, the voucher system to me seems screwy, but I don't know how you, you know, I think they ought to, I think they ought to buy the boots, bring us a receipt for the boots and we reimburse them if I was doing it. Yes, Dorinda. That's fine. Um, first of all, the voucher should be made out more clearly than it is. Um, the last voucher that was made out, all it said was boots. There was nothing that said it had to be safety boots. There was nothing that said it was a pair of boots. I think if you had the voucher system with that pre-filled out stating the criteria that you want according to your policy, that when they walk into Lenny's with that, it clearly states what they can and can't buy. And if yep. it says one pair of boots on that, that's fine. The problem with um, Steve's suggestion of just giving them a $200 allowance, we can't do that because that becomes income. It then becomes mm. taxed and we have to pay deemers on it and everything else. So we really need to stay with the voucher system or a reimbursement if they bring in the reimbursement. This way, if it's with the voucher, the employee doesn't have to worry about getting it back. But um, but we have to have it for audit purposes, and we just can't pay out money in advance. Randy. So one of the problems that I can see happening with the reimbursement scheme is, I mean, I don't know how picky the town is, but I will, I will tell you right now, at my place of employment, we pay, we don't pay any tax. And if somebody pays tax and we ask for reimbursement, they are very clear about the fact that they will not pay tax. So the reimbursement piece of that, we just need to be thinking about that and whatever the town stance is on that, um, take it, that into consideration if you do move away from this voucher system. But they wouldn't have any tax on it anyways, would they, Peter? Oh right, no. It's a, no it's tax. Apparel. It's clothing. It's apparel. Yeah. No, that's a that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. The voucher system has worked for several years, and uh, you know, I think it's easiest if. But the problem is, I think we need to pre-fill out that voucher, so then all that has to be done is the employee's name written on it, and giving it to them at the time. Then it's up to Lenny's to make sure that everything's within that specification. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. That sounds like that could work. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Phil, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm 
I'm fine with the voucher thing. And I was just thinking back to Steve's email. And I think Steve, you brought up um, the idea that the standards may have changed somewhat from when the policy was written. And I, I don't know anything about this, but I'm just, I'm saying, I, I think Steve made a good point there. If in fact, there are changes and we need to look at that, then we ought to think about revising the policy. We should probably make a decision about, is it one pair of boots up to 200 or is it 200 and you can get two pair of boots, you pay the difference as long as they meet that standard. So I think we probably need some policy revisions and then based on that policy revision, you know, Dorinda's suggestion that we kind of have a pre-filled form um, and, and go from there. You know, just I think there's a couple of things going on that we, we probably need to clarify. Yeah, that's my two cents. Well, Randy, you, you did some work on the on the standard saying that the standard we're currently using is obsolete or it's it's no. just it's just been updated. So the the core standard itself, the 2413 remains the same. The the difference is the dash 11 on the end of the certification that was put in place back in 2011. Today's standard, it's the same F2413. It's just a dash 18 because that's the last time that they've actually revisited that, that certification. Um, so so the, core, the core certification really remains the same with a little, a, a few slight, slight differences, but not enough where I don't think that that, that is going to be um, the deciding factor. Okay. The town employee uh, policy or the personnel policy takes it a step further over and above the certification, though, and specifies an eight inch height requirement on the boot. So that's not part of that specific certification. The certification really deals with the compression of the toe and all that kind of stuff, um, impact, all that. The, for some reason, and I don't know why, but the town specifically called out eight inches in height. And I don't know if that was because of some other insurance, uh, you know, reason that we have, you know, with a policy with our insurance company. Um, who knows? I think it's I think it's been there for a long time, and we've just left it there and haven't paid a lot of attention to it, to tell you the truth. Yes, Victor. I called uh, Preston Mayotte, Bosha Osha, for the state of Vermont, yeah. and talked with him, and. Uh, uh, that eight inch uh, is uh, with, with it's uh, it, it doesn't have to. It can either eight inch, six inch. Um, the the rules have really lessened or have uh, lessened a lot. You can actually get a pair in in right conditions. You can get a pair of sneakers with uh, with yeah. a toe in it that that meets the specification. So you don't have to have eight inch. The, the, the idea of the eight inch is for ankle protection, twisting your ankle, and it has that little guard inside it. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't, I'm looking down at my, my ankle. Six inches is going to cover my ankle, but I, I have no idea about what the right thing is. Six inches are fine. Six inch ones are fine, according to the... To the <laughs> and it is the same thing as Randy's saying. It was... Uh, uh, 24 or was it 2413 yeah and then uh there was uh there was a uh, 2412 which doesn't apply really and then and then there's a 13 which was uh that means and like you said in, in 2018 they revised it and these revisions come from 2018 okay so if we're if we're really talking about revising this policy um you know, I think you guys did it just uh, according to this personnel policy. The last time this was uh, this was approved was September of 2021. So uh, September 21st, to be exact. Yeah. Um, if, if we're really going to go about that, I might make another suggestion to alleviate one of the other issues that came about with the whole boot thing. And it has to do with the anniversary date of employees. And I would, I would like the board to think about whether or not it makes more sense to do it on a specific date, you know, like a, 
maybe it's a July 15th or whatever the date is, you know, coming into a, a fiscal year and new employees would be prorated based on their date of hire to that at the time of employment. And then you don't have to spread out this voucher program or Shane doesn't have to track. Okay. Well, this guy was hired on November 1st. This guy was hired on the 27th, you know, whatever. Um, very specific date. The problem, the, the, the problem with that is how do you prorate it? You give it, but let's say the guys that we're going to pay out the money in July and we hire the guy in May, he gets 25% of a pair of boots. Yeah. Whatever that, whatever that percentage is, they're responsible for the rest. I mean, they, they've got, and then in it come July, he gets, he gets a hundred percent of the value again. I don't know. I, that seems a little, little tough to me to say to somebody. I mean, if it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that to be honest with you. I, I think, I think if we get this set up properly and it's on the calendar, I mean, it's, it's not like we have 50 employees, right? We're talking about three people or four people. I don't think it's that big a burden to, to deal with that. But I think the pre-filled out voucher with the proper spec and the proper height and specifically saying one pair of boots at up to $200. So we're clear on that. There's no misunderstanding about that is what makes, uh, is what makes sense to me. And I guess in, in deference to your idea, Steve, I, I've having had, had some chance to think about it and I've been trying to think about how to make this better. Um, my experience with just giving people money is that they'll be wearing their old boots for two years and they'll be spending the money at the bar or wherever they, wherever they spend their money. And I want them to have new boots and I want them to be in good condition. I mean, we could say, you know, we could say, you know, you go, like I said, you go buy a, one pair of boots up to, up to $200, which meets the spec and we'll reimburse you. Um, but you know, there are problems with that as well. I don't know. We need to put, we need to put this to bed. I, I, I think we've, I think we've beaten it up until, uh, until we're all going, going crazy. And then we have to figure out what we do about, uh, about uh, Shane's situation. Well, isn't Shane's situation already figured out? Like, didn't, we already, didn't we already do that? Well, hasn't been hasn't been done yet because I put it on hold, much to Dorinda's distress, subject to this meeting. So if that still holds, um, we should do that, yes. Let's just see if we can wrap up the policy piece first. So yep. um, are we gonna stay with the voucher system? Uh, I, I, think that, I think that's fine if, if, everybody, if everybody agrees. I, do, I do not like the idea of just, just giving them the money. Giving them the money or having them buy it and then get reimbursed. I, yeah. Well, I don't, mind, I don't mind that so much to tell you the truth. Okay. But especially with the pay raises we've given them, it seems to me they could, they could go out and buy the damn boots. But whatever. There is one other issue. And, and I, it, this has probably been dealt with before. Um, what if... In the course of performing their duties uh, on a on you know our roads work sites, somebody ruins a pair of boots, and they've got three months to go before their anniversary date. Can they get an, a new pair of boots then, three months early? I'm not saying they get another pair. Randy shaking his head, no, no. The town's providing them with with a with a set that should reasonably last through that year. If you okay. get into that if you get into that situation, then uh, you know if I want a new pair, what stops me from just going out and and you know doing something to them? I I mean, and I I don't want to think bad, and I think yeah. that that's going to happen, but we, I think it's more than reasonable that the town is providing it on an annual basis. These, yeah. these boots, quite honestly, I wear, I wear a bunch of different styles of them and, and realistically they last a handful of years with, okay. da with daily use. So going a year should be no problem. Okay. 
I just was raising it. I don't know. It's not my. Well, the other thing I would say to, to support that idea is I'm sure, I mean, I don't know this, but I would imagine if it was me and I was going out to work in the woods on the weekend, guess what? I'd put on my work boots. Sure. It's not like, it's not like they come to the town garage in their sneakers and put their boots on. They put them on at home. So anyway. So uh, I just have one last question, and the question revolves around the voucher versus the, re uh, the uh, reimbursement. <clears throat> Would there be a preference from the town standpoint as far as, you know, uh, Dorinda or Cheryl and the efforts that you guys have to go through for one application versus the other? Um, Lenny sends us, when they turn in a voucher, Lenny just sends us a bill with a copy of the receipt of what the person bought. And um, so, so we're, we're basically writing a check to them. If they're looking for, if we're doing a reimbursement, then we have to write a check to that person for a reimbursement for the boots. <coughs> so one way or the other, we write a check. Guys, I, I'm sorry. I, I think Liz is trying to ask a question and she can't. She wants oh, to sorry. know, she, she, well, Go she's ahead, on Liz. this. I don't Liz, know. Did you have a question? She says she said uh, she does not think that we should do reimbursement. That's what she just texted me. She said having a hard time. I don't know, getting in. That's it. Well, who would like to make a motion on this wonderful subject? <clears throat> I'll, you, I'll make Bill. I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, I'll make I'll make a motion to clarify the existing policy to very specifically state one pair of boots up to two hundred dollars on an annual basis, the same way that it's it's currently exists. I I believe it says uh, on their anniversary of employment. Doesn't say one pair of boots though. It should say one pair of boots. That's that's what I'm saying. I want to I want to very specifically call that out in this policy, and that's the change yeah. that I would make to this policy. As long as we're doing it, do we want to change the reference number to the, uh, to the dash the dash eighteen? Yeah, I yes. think we should. As long as we're doing it, yes. Okay. And do we say, and do we say at least six inches high, or do we stick with the eight inches? Six minimum. I would be fine with six inches that meets the standard. Um, so I'm fine with changing it to six inches moving forward. This is that's fine. So my motion includes just to just to be clear. Sarah's waving at us. I, I don't ahead, know Sarah. what the da I don't know what the dash means. Uh, it's the uh, the certification standard. It's the twenty four thirteen dash eighteen. 2413-18. So 18 refers to the last date that it was revised. Randy? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. It doesn't, okay, doesn't there necessarily that? refer to their date. It doesn't re it refers to a revision, not necessarily a date. Yeah, it was done in 2018. So that's the revision. Yes, correct, okay. Steve. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll second. Okay. Wait, one more thing. Yes. Do you guys want the detailed, do you want what Dorinda said about having a detailed voucher, that the voucher states that? Definitely. That the yes. voucher states all of the above. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the motion. Aye. Aye. Liz, if you can hear us, Send up a smoke signal. She said Sue. I don't know if she means sure or Sue. Sure. 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 No, that's sure. something different. Okay. I, she says, she says I. Okay. I. All right. Thank you. So now, Victor, I said I would talk to Shane. Do you still want me to do that? Do you want to do it? How do you want to handle it? Um. It doesn't matter. I mean, uh, I can tell him. Yeah, I, should be better. 
Yeah. I think it's better if you tell them, but I, since I said I would, I will, if that's what you want. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, uh, I read the, I read the minutes and it said you or me, so it doesn't matter. I can do it. Okay. That'd be great. Yeah. I apologize for uh, getting you in hot water if I uh, contributed to that anyway, but I didn't know it at the time. Okay, so Vic will talk to Vic will talk to Shane, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, I'd like to briefly comment on this, seeing as how my letter to the board prompted all this, um, and I appreciate what you said, Steve. But I do very take it very seriously what I bring to the board. And it came back to me that um, I, I'm with a million dollar budget. I don't know what she's worrying about $45 for. And it just seems to be I get criticized when I bring something to the board. And I just don't feel it's right. My second part of my email, my letter was, who, why was this procedure even stopped? Why didn't we go forward with the intent of what was decided by the board in that meeting? And I think, and that is coming from not as the treasurer, that is coming as Dorinda Kroll, a citizen in town. And okay, I okay. just, I, I, wait a minute, let me talk. Okay. okay. I just think this is something that, this is not the first time this has happened. And I think this is something that needs to be addressed by the board. Um, there's more than one issue here. And I think that, um, I, I just don't feel it's right. And I was very upset about this. I still, it still bothers me. And it seems to get brushed under the rug. And um, that's what I'll say. Okay. So let me, let, me just say, let me just say a couple of things. And I don't disagree with anything you're saying, first of all. And I apologize for getting you upset. Um, after receiving Steve's letter, which we all received, I agreed that I would not talk to Shane until our next board meeting and this was resolved. And you're probably correct. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have taken that on myself and I shouldn't have done that. It isn't that I was saying I wasn't gonna do it. I was just saying there was gonna be a two week delay and I did that as a courtesy to Steve, but I didn't mean to not do what we voted on. And I well, I, that. I, I get that, but just as a case in point, we did not get Steve's email until after the conversation had already yeah. taken place with Victor. No. Okay, so that's just a point. So this was already decided on when you had a conversation with Victor at eight o'clock in the morning. You, <laughs> it, well, and we did not get Steve's email till later in the afternoon. Well, look, whatever. So I, I just want to, the story just, that's where these, I think there's definitely not clarity here and or transparency. Yes. Um, just to follow up a little bit, as this was <clears throat> starting to get discussed, um, I wrote you all an email that said, I'm concerned that we're gonna violate the open meeting law by having a third person enter into this discussion and thereby having an illegal quorum. Um, and I, I, I'm grateful nobody else responded and I, I, I wasn't meaning it to be a, a lecture. I just wanted to keep us out of hot water. And as I thought about it, it took me quite a while to compose that email. I, it occurred to me that, um, I think, I think we need some training. Um, we have at times uh, drifted uh, outside of, uh, you know, how we ought to be operating. And I just think it would be a good time for us. We, we belong to the league. 
they have resources. We could have somebody come in. We, we, we could have an annual retreat day. Um, I did this with many, many boards um, over the years. And, you know, we have a new member. Um, Randy's hitting, <laughs> hitting the ground running, but still, I think, you know, he would uh, like to hear from some people who uh, are involved in this kind of thing and uh, just for his own knowledge base. I think, you know, certainly having uh, the treasurer, the town clerk, um, our uh, uh, having Victor, and, and maybe having our new fire chief as um, uh, another person who's instrumental as far as I, I see Vic's position and the fire chief's position uh, fairly similar. Um, that it wouldn't be a bad idea for us to have some time you know, not have any other pressing matters, to have some people who really understand these things, talk to us about statutory roles, responsibilities, um, what we should or should not do, what's good practice, what's bad practice, and, and let us even just ask some questions, um, the things that we've thought about, uh, where we thought, you know, I wonder, if, are we doing this the way we ought to? Um, could we do this better? Um, that promotes some discussion between us. Again, this is not an action thing. This is a, a piece of professional development, if you will, um, for us. So I, I just want to throw that out there as a follow-up to all of this as far as the discussions. Um, we clearly could do better uh, with our own you know, communications, um, and we should do better. Um, so I, I want to put that out there. Not anything we have to make a decision on tonight, but I think it's something we should consider and um, that I would certainly encourage that we look into bringing in the league. We set aside a meeting um, as a retreat meeting for ourselves and spend some time uh, going over what we should and shouldn't do. That's my, my two cents. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a bad idea. I mean, my, my preference, I think it's a good idea. My preference would be, uh, I, I hate those. I just have a, not that I wouldn't go, but I don't like those weekend retreats. I'd, I'd rather have a special, special two or three hour board meeting in the late afternoon or the evening and, and deal with it. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. Yeah. 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 Can anyone hear me? This is Liz. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, wow, I figured out the technology. Um, so I want to acknowledge um, Dorinda's comment and, um, and her frustration. And I, I completely you know, can see where it's coming from. Um, I also want to acknowledge that Peter's job as the chair is to often relay information to people and that everything then becomes sort of hearsay, right? When, you're, when you don't know what the person has said. And the purpose behind minutes and recordings is for the very reason for us to go back to say, well, what really did happen, right? Like what really was said? Um, and, and so I think that, you know, Dorinda's right. I think that there's, even though it's, legal for two people outside of a meeting to have a conversation, um, it probably shouldn't happen, right? But it does, right? It just inevitably does. Um, and so I think it's more about when we have those conversations, if it makes sense for us to be having conversations apart from a meeting just to get clarity on something before we go into a meeting versus is secretive and we're gonna make a decision about a vote. Those are two very different things. And I will say from my eight years of experience on the board, never have I ever been had a conversation with another board member that was a sway of a vote. It was more about some clarity about something that you know, didn't happen, that I didn't get in a board meeting or that, you know, heads up, you know, the road down here, we could be getting people, you know, calling us about this, like that kind of thing. So I don't believe in my heart that there are sort of nefarious things going on behind the scenes between board members. 
although I could be very naive, but I do not believe that's happening. It's never happened to me. Um, but I do believe that, um, you know, things can be misconstrued or, um, or just sort of said in a way that makes it look like, you know, somebody is being misquoted or, or misrepresented. So I think Phil is right. We need to be more cognizant of that. We need to be thinking about every time we say something to someone, we need to be thinking about, is this an okay conversation to be having, right? Like, is this in my heart of hearts, is this the okay conversation to be having? And if it's not, then I think that it's like, well, let's leave this for an agenda item or whatever. So I'm done. The other thing, the other thing I would like to say, and this is, this is probably on me more than anybody else, is I'm I... I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. I don't know what I don't know what that was. My you know, I, I am probably I am probably the person who has had the most conversations with with board me with board members or municipal officials, Sarah Dorinda, whoever, outside of our outside of our board meetings. I do my very best, and I'm not going to say I'm perfect by by any stretch, but I do my best to convey what was agreed to or what the sense of the board was. But that said, and, and the reason is that, that many times it's things that need to be taken care of. You know, something that needs to be done, this, that, the other. Um, I think it would be good to have, good for me to have clarity about when it's okay to do that and when it isn't. I mean, if I should be saying, you know, I'm sorry, we can't have this conversation. It's got to be at the next board meeting or we need to have a special board meeting or whatever it is. I'm, I'm fine with that. And I want to be sure we're, we're doing things the right way. I try very hard to do things the right way, but you know, I think we could all, we could all improve. We can all improve what we're doing. And to the extent that starts with me, I would, I would say, uh, uh, Phil or, or Sarah, let's, uh, let's see what the see what the league can offer to us and and set it up and do it i don't think it needs to be complicated and if there's some yeah. some charge associated with that because you know we're not attending one of their seminars we're asking them to come and meet personally with us i'm in favor of paying the fee whatever it is can't be that much yeah. <clears throat> i'm glad to work on trying to set something up make a couple of phone calls and come back to the board with whatever I find out. That'd be great, Phil. That'd be great. Yeah. But again, let's do it while the while the iron's hot. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it sooner rather than uh, sooner rather than later. Yes, I'll call tomorrow. Okay. I, I for whatever reason the internet dropped me and I and I couldn't get back in. And I got on the phone and then I was finally able to get back in. That was a noise, but uh, I just. Can you just give me just a two second thing on what we're talking about? So what what Phil suggested was that we could use some outside help and assistance to help us conduct our affairs, overall our affairs in the best possible manner. And, you know, learn what the real rules are about what we can talk about, what we shouldn't talk about. I mean, we're all aware of the, you know, the three board members meeting on the corner in the street and making a decision. We know we can't do that, but there there are other things where we could clean up clean up our uh, our activities. And and I stated, you know, there've been there've been times when I've had conversations with with not only board members but uh, other town officials, be it be it be it Shane or Dorinda or Sarah, about something that needs to be done or something we need to work on or or whatever. And you know, it it may be that I'm that I should not be doing that, 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 you know, we have to have a special meeting or whatever the correct procedure is. I want to follow it. I want to do it the right way. And if we're not doing it the right way, we need to change. And I agree with Dorinda a hundred percent on that. I have no, uh, you know, no problem with that. So I, I think we all agreed we're going to do that. Phil's, Phil's going to see what he can, uh, he can set up, but likely it's going to be a special meeting at some point in time for just this uh, 
just this subject. Okay. Did I leave anything out, anybody? Yep. Good job. Okay. Okay. Uh, so here we are. This was supposed to be our meeting when we were going to talk about ARPA funds, and we've used up our whole meeting and more on on other subjects. So I'm I'm going to suggest, and I don't know how everybody feels about it, but I think now we need to consider having a special meeting just to talk about the ARPA situation, because otherwise we're never going to get there. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And I don't know if 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 next Tuesday works works for people. Sooner than sure. later. Yeah. Again, I don't think I don't think we should wait. Would that work for you, Dorinda, next Tuesday at five? Yeah. Okay. Everybody else is okay with that. I I would be away. Um, but if I am, it's it's strictly going to be ARPA. I'm glad to send in um, some of the items that I'm interested in so they get on the agenda um, and certainly trust all of you to, you know, hash out all the, all the, all the stuff. Well, but, I, don't, I don't think, I, I don't think at this first meeting, I, I don't envision we're going to make any, any decisions. I think it's going to be an information gathering meeting is, okay. the, the, way, is the way I see it. Yeah. And, and, and an idea, you know, we learned tonight about the, about the turnout gear and sh you know right. we we agreed we'd do something about that and we haven't done it so i'm glad he brought it up <laughs> we can use some of the arpa funds for that that's probably a good thing but um i think i just and if, I, if i'm saying this wrong please correct me but i think the idea was that we're going to put together some ideas and then potentially we're going to have a public meeting and put this out to whoever we can get to come to our public meeting and see if they have any ideas before we sit down and make final decisions about any of this stuff. I mean, the one thing, the one thing I am concerned about, and I think we know that it's September, uh, I just don't want to lose the opportunity to get the, to get the match on the uh, fiber, uh, fiber situation. And who knows, right. somebody else may take advantage of that match, in which case it doesn't matter. But if we can, double the effect of our uh, of our contribution that would be a that would be a good thing um so anyway well let's plan on let's plan on next tuesday you've got that sarah yep tuesday at five yay yay i know yay but we got to do <laughs> somehow we got to we got to get through this stuff i mean this has been a very productive meeting tonight but it's been a long <laughs> meeting as well um and I would also suggest that um, we defer discussing uh, or pass over discussing fines for uh, it wouldn't be Robert Bowers and Downstreet. It'd be Downstreet, right? They're the ones who own the property. Uh, Robert Bowers owns the house and is the offender and Downstreet owns the property. Now let's pass over it. Okay. Uh um, Do they have an executive director yet? Do you know, Peter? Yes, yeah, they do, and I've I've spoken with her. She's Dubois. new. Like she's not interim. I think she's. I think she's the real thing. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Sarah, you... Just just quickly, I, we'll zip through these last things. I apologize; it's taking so long. But any update on the zoo situation? Uh, yes, that seems to be what? that seems to be rectified. The uh, she's got uh, Carol has new fences up, and uh, a neighbor who has been contacting me daily with reports of the animals has uh, said that they are now behaving themselves. So that seems to be really, really improved. That's the one blessing in this whole spring. Good, and no. I think it's the same neighbor who is updating me as well. I think that's true. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I would say eternal when it comes to dealing with with Carol. Eternal vigilance is the is the watchword. But uh, we all drive by there enough. If things seem to change, and we seem to have people who are keeping an eye. But I'm glad. I'm glad that it's been resolved. Very glad. Um, approving minutes from April fifth. The select board meeting is our motion. Approval. Approval. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> good second. And all those in favor, probing the minutes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, I'm not really sure what, what this one is, except I, I did get an email from, uh, from Roomba Bennett, discussion of rack space access. I can talk about it a little bit, and I think Dorinda will, will uh, back me up here with more detail if I don't get it. But, and Dorinda and I had several uh, email conversations going back and forth because the um, RB Tech folks set up the um, the email address which Dorinda and Cheryl share so that it required two-step authentication. And you may remember when you first signed on, we had to do that once, but this was an ongoing thing. Um, and then they offered several other alternatives using an authenticator. Um, and, and, and Dorinda and I think both felt that that was not really necessary in this case. They have some paranoia um, about uh, it not being protected because these are financials. The thing's not being protected as much as they would like. Um, although I, I don't, I think I'm right about this, that Dorinda and I agreed that this is probably fine having the, the one-step login. So I, in fact, um, told them to change it to the one step. I, I told Dorinda I'm perfectly comfortable setting this up this way. I think we're monitoring everything as closely as we can. If somebody were to get into a system or you know uh, have a bug, we're going to catch that fast. We're in there all the time, you know, like all day, every day. So, uh, and it's pretty unlikely that that we're going to be open this because we've got all the other protections uh, in place. We have a very hardened network. So it was, it was a few days before we heard back from RB Tech, but they wanted us to sign off on uh, um, limiting, I guess there was uh, like a, a limit to their liability, Dorinda, that they, yeah, okay. So they didn't want to make the change unless we absolved them from liability by changing this to the just a regular sign on like we all have. And I felt, as Dren and I talked about this, my feeling was that the board should vote on it. It shouldn't be, you know, me trying to represent the board or Dorinda as treasurer, that it ought to come, you know, to us as a governing body to make a decision. So that's where we are. Um, Dorinda, did, you, did I get that correct? Yeah, from what they told me is every he can't turn off one person, that everybody actually has this, um, this double author. That's what he told me. He no. said he can't just turn off one. And I said, well, nobody seems to have the issue except for Cheryl and I. And well, I, I don't know if it's I definitely because... do not have it. Randy, um, do you? So the budget committee um, yeah. email that you just set up, um, yeah. I, I've been in there a couple of times and it says that it will only occur the first time. Right. But I went back in today and I shared that email with the rest of the budget committee. And it looks like it's requesting that again, which creates problems if my phone number is attached to the authentication right. process and I'm trying to share that email with three other folks. Um, that's exactly what's happening with that it? us. Okay. And, um, and I, think the re I think it has something to do with the IP address. So, so every time you try to sign in from a different IP address, it's registered to a different IP address. And so I think that's what's creating the problem. But the bigger, the only way you can get around it is to download this Google Authenticator. And I'm not going to, I don't feel I should have to download that to my phone in order to conduct town business. And, um, and I'm sure, you know, these other people probably don't want that either. Um, and so, so it is a problem. Um, like I tried to get in over the weekend when this all started and I couldn't get in because the code was going to Cheryl. Okay. Yeah. So and that's what you're encountering. I think, Randy, well, I, I, think. I agree with, I agree with, with both of you a hundred percent. I, I, uh, you know, I think we're I think we're all adults, and we can be careful enough that we're not including 
we all we all know that our that our public emails can be subject to review or scrutiny or whatever it is. We're going to be careful what we put in there, and you know what 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 is it that they're so worried about that Dorinda and Cheryl would be transmitting to each other to be should I pay this invoice? Shouldn't I pay it? Who cares? I mean, I I don't see that as being uh, top secret or critical information. Hey. To, to be clear, Peter, what they're concerned with is somebody from the outside coming in yeah. and and basically hacking into the system. And the yeah. two-factor oh, I authentication. I understand. Is, yeah, it solves that problem. Really totally, but I've, I've, I'll tell you, I've dealt with this double authentication thing. Banks love the double authentication. If you, if you have to deal with them, they put you in these secret emails, special upside down, inside out things. They're unbelievable. And all, all they're saying is, yes, I agree. I'll meet with you tomorrow at five o'clock for a cup of coffee. And they send it to you in some encrypted, <laughs> encrypted email. So yeah. anyway, I don't think, I don't think we need it. And uh, let's, let's have a motion that it's a decision of the board that we do away with the double authentication and I'll sign whatever Ruben wants me to sign as long as it's not too off the wall. Or you can sign it, Phil. Whatever we can. Would you rather, since you've been dealing with them, why don't we give you the authority to sign it? How about okay. that? Is that okay? Yeah. So somebody, somebody somebody make that motion. Yes. Wait, is it right. double? Is it double authentication for all town emails or just the treasurer email? All. We're, we're okay. doing it. Yeah. Do away with it. Spike it. Kill it. And and really, they're asking us to sign a release of liability. Is that what I'm hearing, Steve? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Phil. Yeah. And um. Randy, I will have the budget committee one set up a different way and get back in touch with you. Okay. There's a way to do it as a list that won't require that. Okay. okay. So just to be just to be clear, Phil, just to finish this up, yeah. I don't mind saying a letter, sending a letter saying, you know, you've explained to us the ramifications of not having the double authentication, and we understand it's your recommend, recommendation, but we decide not to accept it. It shouldn't be some blanket release of liability. Um, I know I, Dorinda, they sent us one, right? They sent us a form, that, an actual form they want signed. Yeah. Um, I know I read it over, but I can't remember for the life of me. Um, well, just don't sign, just don't sign it. If it addresses this particular situation, yeah. I'm fine signing it. But if it's some blanket release of liability, no, 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 no. They no, really no. want, we can't do business with them anymore. Right. No, it's got to be just for this issue. I'll look at it. Dorinda, you can look at it. We can decide whether it works or not, and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, good. So wait a minute. Did you guys, you were in the middle of a motion, right? You moved to do away with double authentication and all town emails and to inform RB Tech of this decision. Yeah. And authorize me to sign the waiver. And authorize Phil to sign the waiver. Of, yes. Right. Um, and is there a second? Randy. Randy. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I was I, I didn't understand when I got that email from Ruben. I didn't understand even what he was talking about. So anyway. Uh yeah. Correspondent, Sarah? Um, no, just that uh, the town of Worcester is grateful for, or the, the select board member is grateful for the support that you guys gave them at the last meeting. That was pretty much it. Yep. And you said that to us, I saw it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are adjourned. We will meet again uh, at five o'clock next Tuesday, specifically to discuss use of the ARPA funds. Look at 745 adjournment right on the agenda dot. Victor no. has his hand up. Uh, yeah, Victor has yeah. his hand up. <laughs> Be quick, Victor. Okay. I know you don't like us to ask for permission, but uh, maybe next meeting or the one on Tuesday or something, can we talk about uh, the uh, going to four 10-hour days? Well, not oh. next meeting. Y'all, I, I mean, I can make a declaration, but I don't know if uh, didn't we didn't we make a decision last year about when the four ten hour days would start? Yeah, yeah. There starts next on the on the first of uh, first of May and goes through uh, through uh, November. And I know some people didn't didn't like that too well, 
it doesn't work real great. Well, Victor, what I what I would say is, if if you want to bring it up as an issue, we we should we should discuss it. I mean, I thought I thought we pretty well beat it to death the last time, but if it isn't if it, if, it, if it isn't working and we need to change it, then yes, you should bring yeah. it up and we should discuss it. But so the, the, the select board is going to would 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 uh, decide on it, or is that a is that a road commissioner declaration? I only ask that because you you said that we shouldn't ask for permission. We should tell you what we're doing. Yeah. Let me because that's a personnel related issue. I think that that may be something that the select board should vote on. Okay, I'm fine with that. Go ahead, Steve. My my point is, you wanted to bring it up at the next meeting, and I say no, not at the next meeting. And the reason I say that. We, we just decided to have this strictly for the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get into another discussion. And I say, no, let's stick to the to our that's, agenda and put it on. And and that's fine and dandy. I respect your uh, statement. But I might add that uh, by the time you get to the next meeting, we'll all be ready. We'll already be in the uh, four ten more days. Well, I mean, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Okay. Yeah, I agree, I agree with yeah, I, I agree with that too. I know, it, I know it isn't ideal, but yeah. if we keep, I mean, look at look at what happened to us tonight. We let a few things leak in, and the next thing you know, we've got a got a two and a half hour meeting in front of us. So mm -hmm. we need to deal with the ARPA funds, and we should we should focus on that. And uh, you know, if we need to change, I mean, I'd I'd like I if we're going to change it, I'd like specific information why it's to the town's benefit to change it. Yes, Dorinda. Not to change your mind about when you want to hold this ARPA meeting, but I just want you to know that I did file uh, ten thousand our, our um, ten million dollar deduction or whatever it was that. Um, oh. So we're good for a year. So you do have time to address this. My next report isn't due until next March. But I don't want that. That's not to sway you. That's just to let you know where we stand with ARPA. No, I appreciate you. you I, I expected that you would, you would file it, but thank you. Um, I, just, I just think we really need to start thinking about this. I, I think it's a, and I listened to, I don't know if any of you listened to, uh, I'll just keep you for a second, listen to uh, Phil Scott's uh, news conference today, but he's, he's going back and forth with the legislature about what to do with all the money that's come into the state of Vermont. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not making a lot of progress. They, everybody has ideas, but they're not, they're not reaching any conclusion. And the legislature and the governor are, are at odds about it. So I just, I just want to have some kind of process where we can move down a path and make a decision and feel that everybody had a fair opportunity for input. And by everybody, I mean, anybody in town is interested, not just, uh, not just the select board, but, you know, the whole, when, when we first started talking, since we first started talking about this, the whole situation has changed. I mean, can we use some of these funds to, to do some work on our roads? It looks like potentially maybe we can. Can we buy some turnout gear for the fire department? Potentially maybe we can. I mean, that, that it's just a whole different world with this uh, blanket, whatever we call it, that we, uh, that we agreed to. So anyway. So, the, just the the Vic question. You're going to put that on the May third agenda. Yes. Okay. To to Victor's point, I don't think it needs to be put on the agenda because May first will be here, and they will have moved into a four ten hour day uh, work week at that point, given what the select board has already decided a yep. year ago. Yeah, except I think at any time we can we can change that. Randy would notice, so we could say. And I'm not saying we should, but we could say, you know, effective effective June 1st, we're going back to the regular work schedule if we choose to. I mean, we didn't promise them we were going to keep that that forever. So I don't I, I mean, maybe somebody else disagrees, but I don't see why we couldn't change it if we chose to. Yeah, I think we can. But let's have the discussion and see where it see where it uh See where it goes. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good evening.
Have a good night, guys. Let's, let's hope Thank the you. spring really does uh, really does come. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.